going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. I hope this video finds each and every one of you guys doing well today. So today the topic of the video is going to be Triple Elixir decks. These are going to be great, proven, viable, strong decks for Triple Elixir challenges on Collection Day as well in Clan Wars. Specifically right now we have a big challenge going on. The Ramp Up Double Elixir and Triple Elixir Multi-Stage Challenge. And you can get almost 300,000 gold if you can complete it. So I want to give you guys five awesome decks to try out in that challenge or again in Clan Wars. So let's take a look at the decks guys. If you're more interested in one deck than the other, you can see the timestamps that will show the replays for each of these decks. We'll be sharing four replays today. One of them will include this deck as the losing deck, the Sparky Giant Skeleton deck. Even though it's a really solid deck, we'll include it as one of our best five decks. So this is a really fun off meta, but everything's off meta, let's face it. I like that it has Cannon Car as well. Giant Skeleton is great in Triple Elixir because it's just a lane stopper with a giant bomb and seldom do you have that ability in any other card. It's so unique to the Giant Skeleton and it really comes in handy similar to v2 how giant skeleton is really good there so deck number one is going to be another giant skeleton deck a giant skeleton golem deck really really strong deck deck number two is going to be a bait deck but it has two spells rocket and nato and it also has the inferno tower for all that beat down now remember guys i'm not just going to share heavy decks with you guys i'm also going to share some medium decks now heavy decks obviously do have the inherent advantage in uh triple elixir challenge since there's so much elixir at your disposal but if you pick a medium cycle deck such as this bait deck or such as this one 3.1 hog valkyrie uh these decks inherently have the advantage over beat down decks so of course some of that advantage is going to be mitigated by the three times elixir but you guys will see as we get into the replay so you can certainly have tons of success with a deck like this as well but moving back we have the bait we have the lava no loon just lava hound miner deck another really really solid deck with the inferno dragon and of course we have the hog deck that i just showed you in the sparky deck so let's just jump right on into it here guys and we're gonna start with well we'll start with the first deck right it's going to be played by versatile by the way i do want to give all these players a shout out they were some of the first to complete the challenge that i saw on twitter and i figured hey bring them on the channel their viewers or subscribers and it's really cool to include them so shout out here to versatile first he played this deck incredibly well he actually shared all his replays. We'll just watch the 12 one of these decks, guys, in the interest of time. So let's go ahead and start out in just double speed here. I think that he starts out, yes, with a giant skeleton in the back. Actually, let's go normal speed. It's pretty crazy with three times elixir. So uh, the prince over here is going to be answered with a dark prince. And all of a sudden, the opponent has a golem and an executioner coming at us in the left lane. He opts to go ahead and nato and then use that rock and take care of that inferno dragon, which obviously would have killed his golem. However, we're going to be doing a good job kind of again clogging up that lane so now we're going against a golem and a pekka which is not unusual for this challenge however me personally and obviously versatile as well we prefer the giant skeleton instead of that pekka he's one elixir cheaper and in a lot of ways he's better you know he does clog up that lane he can kill all the supporting troops and he can be very difficult to stop in the right scenario so here we go guys another pretty big push here it comes here it comes down the left lane. It is a giant skeleton in a prince. The opponent does a pretty good job, but you can see the prince, the dark prince namely, is going to be able to break through and make contact with that left tower. And look at that. Inferno Dragon locks on and he is powered up, baby. And that's pretty much going to be the battle. Of course, the opponent in double elixir, well, not double elixir, in triple elixir time, in triple elixir battle, things get really crazy the last minute of the challenge, especially as as people start to understand what the other person's deck is and you can see oftentimes if you have that one tower lead it's going to end up still being a three crown or still being at least a two crown victory and that I think is the case here you can see Tiger the opponent here is already starting to kind of rocket cycle with 40 seconds left here in this match so versatile being smart here he decides to play a little bit of defense with the prince in the left lane but he sacrifices the tower he's getting ready to go really aggressive here he has a giant 
giant skeleton in the pocket. Then he nados everything together. Beautiful nado there. And he just overwhelms the opponent with the prince in the left lane. Left over from that defense and the giant skeleton. Guys, that's a really, really solid deck. You can see other matchups that he shared with me that he beat. Maybe we'll go ahead and just speed through a couple of these at the end of the video. But for now, in interest of time, I want to keep moving along here. So let's go ahead to the next deck, guys. Deck number two, again, is going to be the bait deck. And the bait deck is going to be shared here by Lucas. You can see Lucas's profile. Uh, very impressive 21 player as well. He's, he loves playing bait. So this would be a great deck for you guys who are already naturally inclined to enjoying and being successful at bait decks to go ahead and use in triple elixir matches. So here we go here again. We mentioned it when we were reviewing the decks, guys. But we do have the Inferno Tower. That's going to be crucial. I definitely prefer the Inferno Tower over any other defensive unit, including the Tesla, Tesla, excuse me, which I otherwise consider the strongest defense in the game. So here we go, guys. It's going to be a little push here with the Valkyrie stopping those girl rascals in the back. But you can see that Lucas does have the poison, so he's ready for the graveyard. Of course, you pretty much are always going to get some sort of poison value in these matchups because there's just so many troops on the board. Again, similar to 2v2, it's that same mentality where there's, there's so many troops that you're often provided even more spell value than you normally would. So having the tornado and the poison is going to give you great versatility and in, 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 in just the synergy. Remember, guys, it's been a while since we shared a bait NATO deck here on the channel, but the synergy between Princess and uh, Tornado is still fantastic despite the nerfs to the NATO. So here we go, guys. It's going to be a Valkyrie here again in the left lane. We decide to go ahead and push the right pretty heavy here. We're going to use, I bet you, a, a Valkyrie on the left. Maybe not. Uh, we just let that left tower go. Smart decision, actually, in hindsight. That's why he's the bait player and I'm not, guys. But we do make contact with that right tower. We take his right tower down. Now we have a nice little counter push here with the Valkyrie in the left lane. We're going to go ahead and combo that with the Goblin Barrel. And again here, just because it's three times Elixir doesn't mean that you have to throw away everything that you know about your favorite archetype. You can still play Hog decks. You can still play Bait decks. Go ahead and make alterations because you know you're going to be going against a lot of beatdown, but that shouldn't prevent you from playing a deck that you really love. Of course, 2.6 Hog Cycle, well, that might be a little bit trickier. Again, make some changes, make some adjustments. It doesn't, you don't need to play Golem deck. And you can see Luke is doing a very good job just overwhelming his opponent here again with the heavier deck and he just pulls off the beautiful look at all those rascals there guys Valkyrie doing a good job being the tank with the boy rascal and finishes off that tower for the three crown again we'll show that second replay with this deck towards the end as well but for now let's go into deck number three it's going to be Lava Hound and Azer absolutely loves this deck I reached out to him in my discord look at this 22 war day wins pretty dang in impressive if you ask me. How many do you guys have? I think I have 15 or 16. I'll look in a second. Uh, but let's take a look at Azer's deck here, guys. Lava Hound, Inferno Dragon. You need the Inferno Dragon. There's not a lot of ground in this deck. You're going to be relying on your Miner and your Tombstone very, very heavily, but it's an aggressive deck. That's one thing that Azer really stressed to me, guys. It's an aggressive deck. You're going to be playing it aggressively. You're going to be going rather aggressively with it, more so than you normally would with a Lava Hound deck. So here we go to start off this match against a, uh, a top 100 ladder player, uh, Petro. So let's see how Azer handles this one. He starts out with the tombstone and this is great because he's going against a heavier golem deck again so hopefully you guys will be able to understand how you handle these type of matchups right so it's a golem lumberjack in the left lane the opponent answers with a wizard and guards we go ahead and just fireball that all up and now the opponent's forced to kind of nato but look at their hand all they have is fireball here we're going to be able to go ahead and take down that right tower even despite this wizard played a little bit late by the opponent in the meantime we have another lava hound in the left lane. I told you they're going to have to use creative defenses with this deck because you only do have the Miner and the Tombstone. And you can see we're keeping the pressure up. We're basically just Inferno Dragon and Lava Hound spamming this dude, right? And we actually get, end up getting again that Lava Hound to the tower. Now that wizard is still alive, unfortunately, and he's actually doing a lot of work. So Azer decides to go ahead and send in that Miner and check it out, guys. We are really capitalizing with a lot of damage. We're playing some 
good defense with the Inferno Dragon. We have that left tower down to 1912. Even though the opponent has our down to 1994, you can see we also have a lot of Elixir right now on the board, as does he. So this is going to be very interesting. We have a Tombstone right smack dab in the center again. We can cycle to another Tombstone. You can see he has another Tombstone in his hand if he needs it. Instead of using that other Tombstone, he decides to just let his defenses do work and then concentrate on this next push. Here it comes. It's a Lava Hound. And look at this. Two Inferno Dragons and one Baby Dragon all grouped together on, uh, following up that Lava Hound here. Lava Hound does make contact with that tower. Man, this match is intense, guys. And here we go. A bunch of troops kind of swarming the tower here. The opponent, you can tell, he's not sure. What is he supposed to do here in this situation? He has to cycle back to another wizard, but it was far away in rotation. Now he has Fireball ready. Azer's going to go ahead and send in that Fireball and end the game. Very, very impressive there by Azer against a very tricky matchup of a heavier deck that had a lot of answers to his deck as well. Just doing a good job defensively with the Tombstone, and it looks like he's going to try to go in here for a three crown, guys. Do you think he can get it? There's, only, there's still 30 seconds left, so I have faith in Azer, and you can see how aggressively he played this deck, guys. I wasn't joking about it, man. He plays this deck really, really aggressive, and it can be a fun deck. It's one of those decks that you do have to practice a little bit with, as with all these decks, to kind of get the hang of, but it's definitely a proven and viable 12-win deck, and in Clan Wars, you can have a lot of success with it. Let's go to deck number four here, guys, and deck number four is going to be that hog deck that we talked about, guys, so let's go ahead and watch that replay, and this is by Aurora, aka AU1 from Nova Esports China. Uh, you know him, one of the best players in the world. Well, we cheated, and we did have one legitimate pro on this, because I, I really wanted to share his gameplay using this hog deck, which is just fantastic next level stuff, what you'd expect pretty much from AU1. So here we go. He's going to go up against Mike here, playing that giant skeleton Sparky deck. I promise we would, would do a two for one at the end of the video, right? And you can see he does such a good job coming in here. The opponent, that is, using the NATO and the cannon cart to his advantage. So right off the bat here, the opponent seems to have the advantage in this matchup. AU is going to do a good job on in the right lane, kind of stopping that push before it started and kiting that giant skeleton around, making sure he gets nowhere near in range of his right tower. So again, having the tombstone, and again, just like the last deck, going to be proving a very valuable in these matchups. With so much P.E.K.K.A. going around, so much giant skeleton going around, and so much Inferno Dragon going around, the Tombstone can be your best friend. So here we go again. We decide to go ahead and poison that Sparky. And Sparky, talking a little bit about Mike's deck for a second, this can be a really strong deck too. Having that Sparky NATO synergy is incredibly strong. I think just as strong as Xe NATO, Executioner Tornado, which again is everywhere in these Triple Elixir challenges and in Clan Wars and Triple Elixir. So this time, the Inferno Dragon does lock on just momentarily to that left tower, but AU is smart. He decides to reload with another Tombstone, pull that giant skeleton back, and now he'll have an answer. The opponent goes rather aggressive in the right lane with a cannon cart. We answer it with a Valkyrie. She'll take care of those goblins as well. And now all of a sudden here, we're in the advantage. We're in the lead here as far as damage goes and even with you know I don't know 75 seconds left 70 seconds left in this match you can see the AU has identified all his opponent's cards and he's ready with an answer for any situation again on Mike's deck here having the giant skeleton having the cannon cart and having the sparky and then having a uh, tornado as well makes this deck very very strong you kind of play it like a beat down deck behind that giant skeleton or you can play if your opponent doesn't have rocket you can play sparky in the back and be pretty safe about it if they use your, their poison or their fireball against sparky it's okay you can try to make them pay with a cannon cart at the bridge along with a giant skeleton and really put a lot of pressure on them of course defending depending on what defending troops they have so speaking of uh coming in strong here au1 did a really nice work there he misses that mike misses that fireball he drops the oops but the game was pretty much already over au really had this one well in hand and you can see that he always has enough elixir to play the Valkyrie whenever he thinks the opponent might drop a cannon cart. And he's still keeping the pressure on with the Hog Rider in the opposite lane. Very, very well done here by Aurora from Nova Esports. Uh, CRL China, he dominated, man. I think that he was the best player in terms of win rates on Nova Esports.
esports aside from Elsyop, who you know, arguably is a top two, three player, one player in the entire world. Uh, but anyway, guys, I did promise we would go through a couple more replays just in like double time uh, or triple time, just to kind of give you guys a look at different matchups with these decks. Uh, we won't do all of them, but I'll, I'll show you a couple real quick here, guys. Let's watch this one against a... Ooh, the Expo deck. That's kind of weird, man. Let's watch this one against a super heavy deck with three Musketeers, Executioner, and I think he had Tornado as well. Let's see how he handles this matchup, guys. I haven't even seen this replay yet. I only watched the 12, uh, 12 wins in preparation for this video. By the way, did you guys get the 12 wins yet? Let me know in the comments below. Wishing you guys a lot of luck. I haven't. I played through the first two phases, and then I failed my first attempt at the, uh, the triple Elixir Challenge. I'll go ahead and give these decks a try and then try it again afterwards and i said we watch a couple of matches i didn't need to fast forward at all guys that was a split second finish i told you i didn't watch these beforehand man versatile got lucky on that one that was a really really close one but it was fun to watch too holy moly all right let's go ahead and uh show i think i wanted to show this uh well that's an interesting matchup there and look at he has lightning too let's show this one guys uh, from uh, Lucas, and I will give a shout out to all of these guys again here. Lucas, uh, coming through against a, a Lava Loon with Lightning, which is going to be a little bit of a challenge because we are going to be relying heavily on our Inferno Tower. But again, with this matchup, guys, we have the Inferno Tower. We also have the Tornado. We also have the Rocket. So we have a lot of tools at our disposal with those three big defensive weapons, plus the Princess. We still have answers here. So here it comes, a very high Inferno Tower there for Lucas. Meanwhile, he's still chipping away at the left tower with the Goblin Barrel. Another high Inferno Tower, really placing in those high inferno towers before the opponent even has enough elixir left to play that lightning. This time we rain down that rocket on the balloon. Meanwhile, we have a Valkyrie and a princess in the left lane. We're gonna go in hard here with another goblin barrel. We do connect for a few stabs on that goblin barrel, guys, but here comes another lava loon. And again, we're not gonna play around here. We're just gonna rock it right away, rely on those spear goblins from the goblin gang to play a little uh, supplementary defense. And there goes, again, a goblin barrel connecting already 107 damage left on the opponent's left tower we start focusing on the right tower now bringing it down to around 1400 here it goes again just saving that rocket for the balloon every single time we're not going to play around inferno tower for the lava hound rocket for the balloon and we're looking good and you can use the same type of strategy defensively even against golem decks and other big heavier decks pekka decks as well so guys i hope you enjoyed this video wishing you the best of luck again a huge shout out to all of my guys who helped me out today it is versatile it is aurora it is lucas and it is azer of course really really appreciate these guys and mike too for playing that sparky deck i hope you enjoyed the video best of luck huge shout out to bren chong my youtube partner check out his information in the description below guys thanks so much for watching and as always take care guys